and aloha to everyone today. It is a very early Saturday morning, April 16th, 2016, and uh, the little birds on Kauai are waking up in the rainforest here. Maybe you can hear some of them. But in my uh, Second Life sanctuary, I am above the sanctuary in the Osirian chamber. So welcome to the Chamber of Osiris Arising. Some days ago, I was given a date of May 29th of this year as a time when three distinct star streams, which had been with this earth eons ago, and yet had been sealed away from the planet for our own good in regard to our not being able to actually access those energies in a proper way. And now they are being opened again, and they are coming through specific portals to help to facilitate the whole process that we're going through right now uh, in the ascension modality with the pyramidus radius and all the amazing changes going on on the planet. Now we're needing these star frequencies. We're ready for them. We can receive them. We can translate them. And this is a good sign that despite all the seeming chaos and discord that still remains on the planet, that we're actually, we have made that much progress. What prompted me to um, receive, as I was saying, what prompted me to receive this information was something I was working on with um, Uluru, Ayers Rock in Australia. And I was shown how the energies, there's, a, there's an ancient crack uh, in in Uluru, it's a you know interdimensional portal really, but it's Thoth has referred to it more as a crack. So I'm thinking that it's more of a natural kind of a tear that has been formed its own portal influence rather than a portal that's part of the vortex vortex um, instrument of the planet. That's the wording I'm I'm seeing in front of me, um, but it's more of a natural tear that has been then worked into the fabric of the portal systems of the earth. And it's very prominently involved with ascension dynamics. Um, in fact, many, many years ago, I had a dream, very powerful dream experience, that uh, this was the time of the last phases of the ascension World, global ascension and energies were forming and I could feel and see the whole terrain changing and the textures of the energies on the planet. I mean, it was like looking at it through infrared light almost. And I was in Australia and I was walking toward Uluru and there were people with me and I knew that I had come back in the, a last moment attempt to bring some people that were just in the last moment wanting and able to come and I was moving through this intense pressure uh, because you know it was the last moments and um, it was quite a dream I won't go into all the detail but Uluru was the place that we were going to to move through the last vestige of the portals and receive the new earth star frequency I had been there, I had come back, and I was bringing others through. I'm certainly not the only one that would be doing that if that was the case. It would be many, many people doing that, serving in the last moments like that. And so, when I first received this about May 29th, I was seeing Uluru as the only portal, but no, I that's not the case. It begins the process, but these three star frequencies paths will be coming through many portals after that, all over the planet. 
hundreds maybe. This is the time for us to experience portal consciousness. That is, these vortexes, these worlds, these openings, wormholes, whatever you want to call them, that have been with us on this earth since its inception, although some portals close, others open. That whole part of that dynamic of the planet, of any planet, is present. And we talk about them, and some people experience them, and some scientists even are con you know, working with understanding them better now. But we're be going to become far more intimately involved with portals on the planet. And um, I see this star streaming of the three energies as a, a breakthrough in portal consciousness in general. So what about these star streams? Well, when I first received the information, I didn't connect it to the Stargate Triad, but I was shown by Thoth how it is connected. Now, if we go back in our Osiris Arising project to um, my Kauai matrix, here you see it in my previous home, and the skulls that are the hosting skulls and whatever for that matrix here that I have in, in my main matrix here. But this is, article is talking about the, star, the Stargate triad. And um, this triad are not hosting skulls. That is, they're not skulls that are connected directly to a dweller crystal skull. They are a specific triad unit that was always kind of mysterious to me as to why they were included, but this is the original information I received from them, about them. The Stargate triad are not hosting Dweller Skulls, they are receiving stellar light codes specifically for the OAP, the Osiris Arising Ma um, Project Matrix, the main one in Kauai, and for the satellites hosts around the world. So when I received the names of these skull, skulls, I was told they connected to star frequencies. I googled them and came up with Omicron is a star system in the northern circumpolar constellation of Ursa Major. Orionis is a five-star system in the constellation of Orion, just to the south of Anultat. It is approximately 1,150 light years from Earth. Stella Maris is a name of Ursae Minoris or Polaris, the brightest star of Ursa Major. It is called the guiding star, also lodestar, starship, steering star, etc., because it because it has been used for celestial navigation at sea since antiquity. The name is applied to the Virgin Mary in Saint Jerome's Latin translation. It goes on about that, uh, but it as a star, it is uh, a major point in our heavens. According to what I am receiving, these three, Omnicron, Orionis, and Stellamaris, are stellar coordinates associated with the Osarim matrix. That's the main dweller skull matrix on the planet. Not the hosting skull, but the major crystal skull dweller matrix on the planet that is located in a physical sense, within Mount Kailash at Tibet. So, uh, again, it's the stellar coordinates associated with the Osirim matrix, and in particular, serving to install our Osiris Arising project within it. Well, I'm, I'm speaking specifically about our interest at the moment that I wrote this concerning the Osiris Arising project. So, these are the three skulls. And the one here, Omnicron, uh, was selected by Thoth recently to go on the journey <laughs> with Sun to Thailand and Tibet, not Tibet, not sorry, Thailand and um, Vietnam in Cambodia. Here we see Omicron setting in front of Angkor Wat, 
part of an even larger complex of temples and structures that Thoth wished Sun to take the skull to. There was an, an exchange of encodings going on between the skull and these, these locations. And now it has returned to me yesterday in sitting here with the matrix again. Shortly before I received the May 29th date, I had a dream about a, an Indara crystal, a pure one, that Thoth called the, the start of, and he stated that it had been inserted in the um, trying to think of the name of it all of a sudden, the, the uh, Sahara Desert, or is it the Gobi Desert? <laughs> oh my goodness, let me check on that. Well, okay, it was in Mongolia, in a, in a region of Mongolia, where this pure Indara crystal energy formed or was transported and placed either in a cave or un buried underneath the ground, I'm not sure exactly, but in Mongolia. Now, uh, as, I, as I, I made a, a video for the portal uh, talking about this, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but um, portal members can access that video. But because it's pure, you see, there hasn't been a pure Andara on this planet since the Lemurian and Darian beings took it away and then brought it back as a raided into the hosting crystal glass and lava glass and other things on the planet. And now they're beginning to ray it into crystals. But this is a hosting process, like the like we have host skulls for the dwellers. They aren't the real thing, but they're hosting it. But this Indara is pure. And it was placed there in the sands only a short time ago. They didn't give me a date. I would say a month, maybe a month ago, maybe weeks ago. I don't know. But certainly very recently. Now, when I brought through this May 29th thing, I began to pick up on the relationship between that and the Indara recently having come to the planet, the Stardust. And I saw that... The Indara frequency is ushering in this opening to bring these three star streams into the planet. Well, when I told Sun this yesterday, when he brought Omnicron back to me, he smiled big, in a big smile and said, look at this. And he opened up his backpack and took out this incredible piece of Indara. Now let me show you this to you. Here's this amazing picture of it in front of this incredible waterfall complex. I think he said it was the third largest on the planet that is between China and Vietnam. Now this Indara he found in a little shop very near this location. They're just sitting there. No one was claiming it was Indara or anything and he felt that it was. And he brought it back, and I've held it since. And as far as I'm concerned, this is an incredibly powerful piece of Indara. So on the Omicron journey, you know, there was the skull with him. This came into his possession. I feel this is very significant, so I wanted to add this to the video. Along with these star streamings, there are three star races, or I don't know if races is the right word. These races may be on other stars as well. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call them rather star families, uh, particular ones uh, from a particular world or grouping of worlds around a star or a sun. Well, a sun is a star that um, comes from these locations that was mentioned in Orion and uh, the Polaris star. Um, and the one in Ursa Major, Omicron. Uh, 
I was also shown that there were three um, goddesses, but we don't want to call them that. Let's say three archetypes, living archetypes, energy-wise, of Egypt, uh, or at least they are defined in the Egyptian pantheon as Sekhmet, Bast, and Hathor. And that these three, uh, actually, Bast and Hathor are really aspects of Isis. Sekhmet is not. It's another story. But I was seeing these three, in any case, as archetypes that had energy properties that were associated with the transference of these three star streams and star families into communion with this planet again. Now I'm aware that you know there's Dave, there's Tom Kenyon with the Hathors channeling the Hathors. I don't believe that the Hathors that he's channeling are part of this. What I'm talking about, Hathor in this instance is being represented as an archetypal frequency, a function that is assisting in this threefold um, star streaming. So I am now receiving three names, <clears throat> excuse me, three names or words or tones that are associated with these three star streaming energies and entities. Om would be for Omicron. Ma would be for the stellar Stella Maris or uh, Polaris, and Or would be for Orionis. These aren't, of course, the actual names that these beings call themselves or anything. This is, this is what Thoth is giving me to be able to vibrationally tune in to these three streams. So they could be literally chanted, Om, Ma, and Or. Now, of course, Om and Ma are actual, you know, chanting vocables. Or is not in our understanding, but it also means light. And um, so it is a light frequency syllable, I would say. Om. Ma or so we can see ourselves at this time in a transformational flame burning away gently but powerfully all the dross. I say gently, for some of us it doesn't feel very gentle. But believe me, it is by comparison to the strength of the energy involved. And in this process now, we're going to be given three additional star streams. They are all associated with tones, with frequencies. And I'm going to be doing subsequent videos on this topic leading up to May 29th, and certainly something specific, maybe an activational video for the 29th date. So this is just the first step in understanding all of this, what it means to us and how it relates to the whole picture. But I can say that at this time, it is so very important to remain heart-centered and to let the fire burn and be connected to that flame in your heart, in your mind, and in your presence. And so it is.